good so uh, good evening again and again thanks for attending so this lecture will be complementary to our uh, lectures on uh, input introduction technologies like i guess working gesture or speech recognition system and uh, this lecture will later be followed by another lecture on tracking technology in which we will talk about various uh, model view or projection uh, transformations and tracking object for a display within this display we will look at the historical perspective of development of display and then we'll look at a few types of ar and vr type of displays and also we will have a couple of slides on volumetric or 3d displays so here is a brief history of display so you can uh, find the source uh, from uh, bottom and uh, if i will uh, not go through all the rows of this table but some highlights are in 1964 uh, it was the first crt display or cathode ray type of display uh, was uh, invented and uh, started to be marketed as a computer monitor even if it is invented uh, a few years ago and 1975 the first uh, resistive touch screen display was uh, developed by uh, george hurst then uh, jumping to 1997 apple ibm and viewsonic begin developing color lcd monitors that offer comparable or better quality and resolution compared to crt monitors and the overall size and weight of the display uh, drastically changed and in 2009 led monitors uh, for desktop computers uh, began to be uh, manufactured and now we are uh, living in a generation of uh, oled or even uh, plasma tv display which shows a much higher uh, spatial and temporal resolution of display so <clears throat> before going into various types of display let us look at a very simple uh, classification of display based on their relative position with respect to our body so uh, head mounted display system can be used for both augmented and virtual reality and these are wearable device and then we have the handheld uh, devices like uh, smartphone tablet computers which we hold by hand and then i can uh, use the camera to render outside uh, field and uh, the outside live video if it can be augmented with uh, synthetic uh, objects and finally we have the world space or the standard display which we can say and uh, it can come in two form one is a stationary display like our computer monitors or uh, tv sets and the projected display like as we use during our class lecturing that we project it uh, on a screen and uh, the stationary display they directly emit lights which reach uh, our uh, eyes on the case of projected display it reflects light on a surface and we see it through the projection so this is a very early uh history of displays on the left hand side you can see the schematic of the crt display and uh, basic scheme diagram of uh, liquid crystal display so the crt display has a cathode ray gun and it has rgb types of rays which combined and it hits the rgb phosphors on the screen and uh, the as the um, cathode ray gun hits the rgb phosphors the different proportion of mixing of the red green and blue colors create the gamut of color vision but most uh, crt displays do, do not uh, <coughs> display the whole gamut of uh, human color vision in case of uh, lcd display uh, mostly there is a backlight and it illuminates a set of uh, liquid crystals and uh, they are is a polarizer in front of them and based on the by tuning the voltage difference we can uh, create different shades of gray or different shades of light through the lcd so the lcd itself doesn't emit light rather the backlight is polarized through the lcd uh, or the liquid crystals and that creates the display and when the backlight uh, use the standard ccfl or cold cathode uh, ray so that becomes the standard uh, lcd display while when the lcd display 
use the LED backlight. So we popularly call it a LED display, but the LED display is that uh, LCD display which is backlit by LED. So that is the uh, standard LED display. And now we also have uh, OLED or organic LED display. So in standard LCD, we have backlight um, through the CCFL or cold cathode fluorescent light uh, technology. In standard LED, we have uh, LED backlight, and in organic OLED, we have uh, with the LEDs they directly emits uh, RGB type of light, and that uh, mixed together, so it, it doesn't uh, use another. Uh, backlight and the uh, advantage is it has a wider color gamut uh, than uh, and a wider dimming range compared to standard LED or LCD display and of course the greater contrast ratio and uh, very slim but also has an advantage in terms of uh, also well, has a disadvantage in terms of uh, recycling. So this is a picture of comparing contrast between the LCD and LED monitor, although the picture is not uh, rendered very well uh, in this screen, or you can uh, may not uh, see it very well. But uh, the <coughs> LED and later the OLED has a better contrast ratio, dimming range, and uh, bigger color gamut uh, display capacity than the CRT or liquid crystal display. So at this point, it may be, will be interesting to note that how we characterize displays. So there are several properties by which we can characterize display. So already we talked about two characteristics that are wider gamut of color vision and uh, uh, bigger dimming range or higher contrast ratio. But uh, inside of that, there are uh, some other uh, properties also, which we can look at. Uh, display. If we look at a wider range of display cons um, consisting of both head-mounted display or handheld display and so on. So some of these properties are like the stereoscopy. That means uh, we, uh, when uh, the we can perceive depth by creating two slightly different image in uh, each eye, and our brain can process this different information, these different images and that's, we can perceive depth. So uh, in this slide, VST stands for video see-through uh, display and OST stands for optical see-through display. So uh, when we use uh, two different video source so that uh, we can perceive the, or we can render depth easily and that is a stereoscopy display. Similarly, the focus of the display that uh, the, uh, there is a challenge in augmented reality uh, type of display that is called accommodation vergence uh, conflict, which means that uh, when we are looking at the uh, augmented reality type of display, in one side we are looking at the real objects and the, uh, we have no control on the z-axis or the depth of the real objects that is captured by the uh, camera. On the other hand, we are creating some synthetic objects on top of the uh, real object, and uh, that may occur at a, or that usually occur at a different uh, z-axis or different depth than the original object. More interestingly, that the real life object may be a moving object, so constantly its uh, depth is changing with respect to the viewer, but the synthetic uh, object, is created at a fixed z-axis, and this problem uh, known as accommodation vergence uh, conflict in the context of air display. A few solution of this problem, and the problem becomes uh, significant for the human viewer that when he uh, wants to focus on the synthetic uh, objects, he has to focus on a particular z-axis, but uh, that may uh, cause him to lose focus on the far away object. You can think the problem more seriously from the uh, driving point of view. Say I am using a head-up display, which is uh, projecting objects at the plane of the windscreen. So when we are looking at them, I am not focusing on the far away traffic participant, which is maybe moving towards me, and vice versa, that when I am looking at the far away road, I am not focusing on the head-up display. 
so some uh, way of solving is using uh, eye guest tracking that we are finding where the user is uh, focusing and creating the synthetic object at that plane only or constantly uh, sensing the depth of real life objects and adjusting the synthetic objects accordingly which is very much computation in, uh, sensitive and so on then uh, occlusion is another property of uh, mostly uh, virtual reality display that where virtual and also partly uh, augmented reality display uh, that uh, where virtual and real objects they can occlude each other and the resolution uh, which is often constrained by camera resolution in case of video see through uh, display or refresh rate that how quickly uh, it is changing and if the refresh rate is uh, low then flicker may offer field of view and uh, of the display and uh, for augmented reality display the field of view is uh, restricted by the camera which is showing the real world object and um, also uh, in a virtual reality uh, system the field of view comes into picture we, uh, when we are moving our head we want to update the screen synchronously like uh, real uh, life so even though we have a smaller fov but we have to create the virtual scene for a bigger fov than my static uh, head position and then there are other uh, properties like viewpoint offset which requires calibration for video see through interface we will see the video see through interface in a few slides after and the brightness and contrast which we already discussed and uh, also uh, considering outdoor contrast when we talk about augmented reality display distortion ergonomics of the display like a bulky headset like the say the microsoft hollow lens or our htc5 uh, set those are fine for a short duration study or demonstration but if you want to wear it all the time in a factory floor that then it becomes unrealistic on the other hand a uh, uh, lightweight wearable may be a possibility or even uh, if we have a display which is a handheld device then that becomes more ergonomically um, easier to handle but then every <coughs> display has its own uh, limitations so moving on this is a classification of see through displays or mostly the augmented reality types of display and the broad classification is based on the stereoscopy that means monocular or binocular and then both of these uh, types of display can be divided into video see through and optical see through display and for video see through display we can further classify based on the number of cameras and in case of optical see through display we can look at the overlays that means the layer of the virtual object on the real life object so let us look at what is this optical and video see through display so this is the very simple arrangement of optical see through display that the real world is coming from right hand side and we have a optical combiner and then we are generating virtual uh, annotations on the optical combiner and the user he is uh, looking at the real world but uh, he is also seeing the uh, virtually generated object and ideally it should also has a post sensor of uh, head movement so wherever the user is looking that this they should move synchronously with his head so this is uh, probably we already went through this uh, video so this is one of our laboratory work on creating uh, optical see through display so here the wind screen itself is acting as a optical combiner and uh, tft uh, or a high brightness uh, tablet in this case the uh, microsoft uh, surface pro tablet which has a high brightness level that is uh, acting as a image source so we are rendering these icons on the real world scene and uh, through the eye guest tracker we are uh, tracking the pose of the head and we can detect uh, whether the person is looking straight ahead or whether he is looking away in which case we are uh, sounding an alarm based on the distraction of the person so here you can see the video see through feature uh, further that uh, these uh, icons are overlaid on the actual screen so in comparison to optical see through display the other one is video see through display in case of optical see through display the real life uh, objects 
those are combined with virtual objects using optical combiner but uh, but the you are still seeing the real life objects but in several situations we capture the real life using a camera and then we combine it with virtual objects so that type of uh, display is called a video see through interface where we have two cameras uh, or maybe we are using a um, Wow. or we can also make it with one camera if we have a different way of uh, sensing pose of human. So that uh, we use a back facing camera. Back facing means that it is looking the other way than the user. Here, this is termed as image sensor, which is uh, sensing the real life. And in the digital combiner, we are combining the real life video with virtually created object. So this is again another example. We have looked it in some earlier lecture of video see through interface in which uh, uh, we <coughs> users are interacting with eye tracking uh, for a human robot interactions task that uh, the red blob is showing the I guess location and the real life is rendered through this video screen. And uh, then users are operating the real robotic arm looking through the live video feed and then we can render so in this screen we do not render anything just the we are sensing the eye gaze but uh, we also have uh, in this application we also have object recognition feature so since we are sensing the outside environment through a sensor so we can process the sensor information for a desired type of target so in this case we are tracking this blue cap and similarly we can track any other object or any specific uh, anything with a specific shape or color signature we can track through the video see through interface and we can render the virtual objects in this case a set of icons accordingly uh, or based on the relative position of the real life object and then we can add uh, interaction layer in which we are uh, in this case we are using eye tracking but uh, it need not to be eye tracking we can also use other modalities like uh, traditional touch screen touchpad or gesture recognition speech recognition or whatever so moving forward the third type of display is a projected display in which case we project something on real life objects and this projection add extra information so for example here this is another demonstration from our uh, laboratory so we are trying to make a sensor dashboard which is showing both uh, spatial and uh, temporal information together so here what is happening that the screen on the screen so this is a uh, kind of uh, early stage research example but uh, we can also project information on real life objects like uh, you may note that now it is uh, it's pretty popular that uh, the branding advice uh, branding advertisement is uh, uh, projected on the floor or the shop floor so uh, it can be very naive that it's just projection or it can be more uh objects the pupil will uh, contract or dilate based on the ambient light but we have to adjust the brightness of virtual object based on the real life uh, illumination condition and combining wide uh, field of view with small lightweight form factor that means showing up 
um, <clears throat> or annotating a wider range of real uh, live video with augmentation, uh, but with a smaller uh, form factor of display that becomes uh, challenging. So for a VR headset, the whole display uh, or the whole uh, display principle is packed inside the glass that we will see in a few slides after. But in a AR type of display, the size of uh, display is pretty small and it becomes challenging to uh, take care of the wider field of view of uh, natural display. So um, just to mention one more time that uh, in the next semester, when we will uh, run this uh, AR VR course, so we will have some hands-on session on uh, teaching AR and VR programming with uh, Unity. So if any of you are interested, you can continue with that course. But uh, now let us uh, move on to other types of display. So from the augmented reality, let us move to the virtual reality type of display. And uh, here the situation is slightly different. That means that we create a uh, or we uh, integrate the display inside the headset or we can also use a projection system and the user has to wear a specialized polarized glass to this slide is showing the inner components of a oculus rift display so here you can see two, there are two oled displays with 90 hertz refresh rate and uh, through a constellation of IR camera, we can track user's head for 360 degree. In the tracking and calibration lecture, we will go further details into the tracking aspect of both Oculus Rift and HTC Pro 5 displays. Besides a headset based uh, VR display, we can also use uh, projection based VR display. So, in this picture, we can see uh, three such projector based VR display. Uh, the first one using a single cathode ray tube and uh, both the first and second display are called the uh, workbench displays and uh, they are adapted from uh, permission from Barco and Baron. And in uh, both these workbench displays uh, we reflect the CRT display through an inclined plane and uh, on this horizontal surface and here slightly inclined horizontal far surface we create depth perception and then uh, this is uh, another older technology using a four projector uh, cave system and presently uh, the projector based we had displays use a constellation of uh, identical projectors and the advantage is as we discussed earlier that the user has to wear less bell bulky headset so we do not need to fit the head um, displays inside the headset rather the user can view with a uh, single uh, polaroid camera the polaroid glass here is uh, one classification of various 3d displays uh, dividing them as a holographic display volumetric display and auto stereoscopic display and head mounted display so we already talked about the head mounted display and we also briefly talked about we'll briefly talk about auto stereoscopic display uh, in the next few slides but next we will spend two slides on a sample holographic display and also one volumetric display both are which uh, are still uh, research products due to their lack of refresh rate uh, they have not been uh, commercialized as widely as head mounted or projected based VR technologies so this is a picture of a holographic display and the left hand side picture is taken from a recent worldwide patent where uh, a holographic display has been uh, proposed to for a automotive uh, user interface use case and it utilizes the diffraction of light to create a virtual three dimension image or object and uh, in fact there is a whole museum in uh, Crete on the holographic display and uh, these are distinguished from other forms of uh, 3D imaging is that they do not require uh, any glasses 
or any wearable to view and you can uh, look it like a real life object although a uh, holographic display with a high enough refresh rate uh, is not still uh, commercially available rather uh, most holographic displays those, uh, create kind of static displays but the static displays they are uh, very uh, the resolution is as high as a real life object so it's almost indistinguishable from a real life object the other type of 3d display is again it's uh, very much in the research stage is a volumetric display which uh, can display object in three dimensions and here also you can see that uh, like a um, <coughs> holographic display the user doesn't need uh, any wearable so one example is foxon photonics and auto stereoscopic display um, which are uh, auto stereoscopy uh, is the term which means that we for stereoscopy you do not need any uh, extra wearable and it's automatically create stereoscopic display so a very early example was uh, created in early 1990s at uh, cambridge university computer lab and it's still there and presently the auto stereoscopic display holography is one such example and uh, this voxon photonics they are creating such a display and the ultra leap uh, <coughs> which recently acquired the leap motion company they are also creating a type of volumetric display using uh, ultrasounds but the issue is same that the refresh rate is not good enough for a real life application but still uh, research is going on to increase the refresh rate so that we go, we can render any graphics on that and we can change the graphics in real time so presently we can render any graphics on volumetric displays like holography or maybe using this uh, uh, ultra leap sensors but uh, the refresh rate is uh, not big enough for changing the display in real time so the main takeaway points are the history of display development and different types of VR, VR related displays. And uh, most of the discussion was at the introductory level, but uh, we can go into further depth in uh, for each type of display when we'll talk about tracking, calibration, and uh, transformations. And we also talked about classification and main characteristics of display and some futuristic work on the autostereoscopic and volumetric display. So with that, I will stop talking. And uh, sorry if you uh, do not hear any part of the display, uh, any part of the lecture. So now I will stop sharing and recording, and we can look back. Earth has a diameter of roughly 8,000 miles or 13,000 kilometers and is round because gravity pulls matter into a ball. But it's not perfectly round. Earth is really an oblate spheroid because its spin causes it to be squashed at its poles and swollen at the equator. The moon was created when a rock the size of Mars slammed into Earth. Shortly after the solar system began forming about 4.5 billion years ago. You are facing an entry point to an abandoned settlement. All around the town is a wooden fence. A wooden path leading down to the sea. On both sides of the path are wooden buildings. Studio available. Entrance to the smithy. Another exit to the left. Scan start. Stack of buckets. Pillar. Plank pile. Skull stick. Smithy wall. Halfway point in smithy. Sword. Sword. Reached sword. Press sword. Y to pick up.
we investigate the possibilities of using synthetic data to train and validate CNN models. By utilizing PBR materials and baked global illumination, we constructed a digital twin of our workspace. We chose YOLO version 3 as our person detection model and we computed the bounding boxes and the corresponding centroids. We then calculated the Euclidean distances between these bounding boxes. If any two individuals were to come within the 6 feet, the otherwise green bubble turned.